Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, we're already off to a good start where my, my green screen stuff is acting funky on me. Hopefully that, hopefully that alleviates things for the duration of the video. We'll see about that, won't we? Uh, so I'm trying out something brand new and novel in today's video. Uh, I'm trying my best to address all of the audio issues here. Uh, I'm not quite used to this whole uh, having to tinker with audio thing. Uh, before, when I used Camtasia in a headset, it was all very straightforward, and I, wouldn't, I didn't have to worry about too much. Using this uh, Streamlabs thing and this very sensitive headset mic has uh, truly thrown me a, a bit of a curve, a curve ball. If you're from a different country and don't know what a curve ball is, uh, Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have a video about how to throw a curveball. But uh, I, I got thinking back to when, uh, when I speak at conferences and uh, how the, the audio tech always puts the mic on my shirt. And so now instead of having the headset over my ear, where it's very close to my legendary proboscis, uh, I have it on my shirt, which will not only keep it dry, it's going to start raining in my office, but also should cut down on unwanted biological noises in all my videos. Uh, if it's, and, it's, and it's tilted out a little bit, so it can't rub on my shirt very easily. I would have to go through excruciating lengths in order for me to have a shirt rubbing. <laughs> anyway, uh, in this video, we're going to talk about my brand Banking new, just hit it with a champagne bottle, doctor smacked its butt, a store procedure uh, that is intended to mine the uh, system health extended event session for useful information. Uh, it is called SP underscore 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 health parser. Uh, I couldn't think of anything better at the time, so... You're stuck with this. I'm stuck with this. At least it's not SP Human Events Health, health Parser, uh, <clears throat> like SP Human Events Block Viewer. I, I might just shorten that one to SP Block Viewer uh, because I'm sick of typing human events in front of it. So, uh, yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> it ain't easy being green. Uh, so the, the, I'm going to talk through in this video uh, some of the more interesting results that I found while looking at uh, the results uh, on various systems where there are interesting things to be found. Uh, as I find more interesting things, I will be adding more to this. And uh, I will also, uh, well, I'm also going to give you a, a walkthrough of the, the code in SP Health Parser because uh, I think you might be interested in some of what it does. Uh, there is at least one section that I'm leaving, or two sections that I'm leaving out of this. Uh, one is the section where I grab uh, information about memory usage, just because I haven't had any like, real big aha moments with memory usage yet. And the other one I'm leaving out is uh, the blocked process report section. So it turns out, and you know, hidden in... Well, can you really call it like three layers deep in XML plain sight? I don't think so. But it is in there. But there is an incredibly nerfed blocked process report section in the system health extended event XML. Uh, I don't know when it showed up, to be honest with you. Uh, I haven't gone back and tested this on any servers older than SQL Server 2016, but at least it, 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 the, the nerfed blocked process report at least exists back in SQL Server 2016. Uh, I also added code to SP underscore human events block viewer to hit that uh, nerfed system health extended event thing. Uh, if, you don't, if you're working on a server that doesn't already have an extended event set up, to use the blocked process report, um, you, can, you can use system health and you can go in there and you can at least get some blocking information out of it. <clears throat> so uh, this is the first section. And the first section that, 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 that I found in 
the uh, system health extended event that I wanted to pull data out for. Now, all the stuff that I'm pulling data out for is performance related. There's nothing in there about like security ring buffer errors, general errors, any of the other stuff that goes in system health, because uh, I just don't really care about that stuff. If you want to go get that stuff, you can go get that stuff. It might suit your job or what you're troubleshooting really well. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with me. So sorry about that. Uh, if you are the type of person who cares about those things. The, the first section I found that I wanted to pull out was this section uh, where SQL Server logs queries with significant wait stats. Uh, th this is just a small portion of what I found in there, but uh, you, know, you can see uh, the wait type, the duration of the wait. Um, there is a filter, when we do the code walkthrough, I'll show you, but there is a filter available in here where you can set a, a lower bound to the duration in milliseconds that you care about for queries with interesting weights attached to them. Uh, so far as I can tell, this only shows you uh, one interesting weight per query. I don't, I've, I haven't seen it show multiple uh, interesting weights per query. So it's just like the most notable interesting weight. I don't know what, I don't know what threshold Microsoft uses for that because I've seen some really low numbers in there. Like you can even see the bottom number here is like 187 milliseconds. So I don't even know that like, um, I don't, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes to figure that out in log Vs. Uh, so I don't know. We're just going to have to deal with that <clears throat> as, as adult human beings and adult human being situations. Uh, there's also sections in there uh, for general wait stats. Uh, these are not attached to queries, but uh, this will show you, uh, actually should walk this over from the furthest column over and, you know, horrible green screen accident, haha, -ha, good joke. So uh, in this section, uh, what I do it, by default is I round the event time to the nearest hour. There is a parameter, again, we'll, sh we'll show you during the code walkthrough, where I allow you to round this to different precisions. So you could like do hour, minute, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you find suitable. You could even do it for a day if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, by default, I go by hour just because I figured that was kind of like a, a good summary per hour of what went on, right? All the weights in there. Uh, you can also find when there were I.O. issues on your server. Now, uh, this section I, I found some really interesting stuff in on uh, a couple, in a couple places. Uh, you can see that the longest request crest path behind my head is a little bit blurred out for obvious reasons. Uh, if you can figure out uh, which server I was on because there's an L drive and a D drive, God bless, you are, you are quite the Columbo. But uh, in this section, you can see there are a bunch of warnings in there. Right, so uh, you can see that uh, there were no I.O. latch timeouts, but there were a significant number of long I.O.s uh, and total long I.O.s, and then the longest pending requests in seconds for things. And this is summed up per pending request file path. Uh, what I found in the XML is that um, there were multiple entries. It was really tough to pull this out at first. There were multiple entries for each potential multiple entries for each file path in there. So I had to like split that out and then sum things up. So uh, while it, there may be different like offsets and stuff in the file that we're experiencing long IO, this sums everything and just kind of gives you a high level view of where stuff took a long time in the file. Uh, it also brings back CPU issues. Uh, so I think this is a, this is an abridged set of data from the CPU issues set of columns or a bunch of columns in there but uh you get the max number of workers set up for the for on the server you can see there someone someone might have tinkered with that and said it's a 10,000 rather than letting SQL server decide uh you get how many workers are currently created how many are idle how many tasks completed within the interval between SQL server logging stuff to extended events and then one that uh, I think is pretty interesting is this pending tasks column uh, I've seen situations where when this column has a really high number in it, uh, that means that the server was under really significant CPU load, maybe even hitting some thread pool weights. So keep a close eye on that pending tasks column. Um, you know, one thing that uh, is on my, on my plate for this store procedure, but is not 
um, but is not uh, implemented at all yet are some like uh, like a lot of the other store procedures are right have like a finding section where like I talk through or like I try to warn you about stuff when it gets really bad for for now on from like for now on this one you're just kind of stuck eyeballing things a little bit the same as I am so as as the script matures it's still in beta as it matures it'll have more stuff in it to help you not have to read through so much and to hopefully just get sort of a high level overview of what's going on on a server that's having a crappy time uh, there are also sections for sort of overall system health. Uh, well, there's, there's one section with a lot of columns in it. The big one up top is uh, a, a much shorter set of columns. And then th this, there's a bit of a scroll bar on this one. Uh, it's one reason why um, I'm not doing this live. <laughs> also, it would have been a little bit harder to censor things, doing it live. But uh, there's some stuff about spin locks. And boy, oh boy, does everyone really care about spin locks. Uh, on this server, uh, there are a significant number of latch warnings, right? So, like, you know, buffer latches, you know, are taking a long time to happen and complete and stuff. Uh, but then, like, the, the bottom section really does have some cool stuff in it. Um, so, starting way over on the right, you know, tragic green screen. Uh, total dump requests. So, like, every time SQL Server wanted to make a stack dump, uh, the number of dump requests that happened in the particular inter interval between collections there. So, like, you can see total dump, dump requests go from four to six. And there were two dump requests in that interval. Um, if there were any non-yielding tasks reported, you get that in this column. Uh, page faults, which are kind of a meme. It's just, like, who, who cares, really? Uh, then there's some information about system and SQL C uh, CPU utilization. And then if we, uh, which way do I turn here? There we go. There we go. That, that looks good. <laughs> that looks happy. Uh, if any bad pages were detected by, like, you know, having uh, checksum page detection turned on for your database, or uh, your AG or mirroring fix any bad pages, that gets logged there. But uh, I don't know. There's 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 enough cool stuff in there that I think it was worth pulling out. This section, this section, this section, this section, this section. I am on the fence about uh, because this section is like the crappiest input buffer section. Um, you know, like there's that DMV where it, it like gives you a bunch of information about like what a query's doing, but the command instead of being like the full text of the query is just like select, update, delete, you know, insert into, select into, stuff like that. That's what this is. And the worst part is that there's not anything to identify the query in this set of XML beyond this task address column. And this task address column only exists in a couple DMVs in SQL Server that uh, are, are ephemeral. So like data doesn't hang out in there waiting for you to figure out, waiting like on a task address where you can just be like, oh, I can just join this to that and like get some information from it. I don't get that. So all I get is this task address. Uh, I, I'm including this, that call, the task address column and beyond that, this section in, in the store procedure for now. I don't know if it's always going to stick around in there, though, because quite frankly, I, f I, found it, I find it kind of useless. And in fact, the table name that uh, the table name that the, the, the temp table that this data gets inserted into for XML processing is even called useless. Uh, there are a couple other like sort of interesting columns in there. If I move my giant head, uh, you have CPU utilization for the server, which you know is, is showed up in a couple other places, and then CPU time MS. And at first, I thought I was screwing something up, but the call, but like the XML attribute for this is actually called CPU MS. So it's not me screwing anything up. It's SQL. It's maybe SQL Server, <laughs> whoever whoever designed this, screwing something up. Uh, I, I guess it could be right if this is like if like DBCC check table is going in parallel. I don't know. <laughs> like, quite frankly, uh, th that's a lot of milliseconds, even for something going parallel. So I'm not entirely sure there. Anyway, uh, that's all that I had in uh, the slide section of this. Uh, oh, oops, I was messing around with SP, SP Blitz index over there. Pay no attention to that. Pay no attention to the weird bug I found. It's okay. We don't need to talk about it. Uh, so let's get up to the top of this here store procedure. And uh, so like, like I said, this is still in beta. I don't have uh, everything quite done for it yet. Just sort of like the basics right now. 
Um, if you're familiar with my other store procedures, you know that like I have a help section where uh, it sort of it tells you the parameters that are available, the values that are available for them, default values, a data type, stuff like that. For now, I just have this. Um, so start and end date, if you want to plug in a start and end date to look in the system health extended event for, I can't guarantee you that the, the dates you're looking for will be available in there since system health is kind of a best effort thing. But if, you know, if you're lucky enough to find that stuff, it will be in there. Uh, warnings only will filter the results when possible to only places in uh, the XML where there was warnings or bad stuff going on. So like, you know, like if you had clean I.O. and no CPU warnings and stuff like that, uh, it would filter out those rows. Um, there's database name in there. Database name is only functional for the blocked process report because uh, that's the only thing that has a database name in it that I've been able to find and do any meaningful filtering on. Uh, wait duration MS, so that's what, you'll, that's what you can use uh, for the, the queries with uh, interesting weights section. Um, I forget if I implemented that for the general wait stats section yet. Uh, the wait round interval minutes parameter is what you would use in the uh, wait stats roll up by count and duration sections. So like if like like I said, by default it's set, set to an hour. If you wanted to set it to like 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever, you could do that. Um, you know, how, whatever floats your boat. Uh, if you wanted to figure out how many minutes are in a day, you could even round to that. Uh, and then the usual debug help version stuff, just, you know, because that's sort of like in my template for creating these store procedures, so whatever. Um, there's a mild help section so far, nothing too crazy. There's my MIT license, uh, some copyright stuff. Uh, there's a little bit of setup stuff to get uh, for the dynamic SQL that runs. Uh, there's a little bit of messing with the, um, uh, the start and end date parameters to transfer them to UTC time because all of the events are stored in UTC but presented to you, dear query, dear store procedure runner, uh, in your local time. Uh, and then let's see, uh, a little bit of math there. Um, here's the list of weights that I ignore, um, partially influenced by Paul Randall uh, and partially influenced by stuff that I've seen when running this that I just realized. Uh, I didn't care about and couldn't do anything meaningful with the uh, results of. Um, uh, create a couple of temp tables. Uh, look to see if... Oh, yeah, so this section here. Um, SQL Server 2017, I had a blog post about it. Introduced has a column in there called uh, whatever UTC where you can filter on stuff a little bit more easily than uh, in, in earlier versions where you need to like get the timestamp out of the XML before you can filter on it. But even this is like sort of terribly broken because you have to cast, you have to convert the value in that to, um, so, to like an actual native data type because it's like in, in, internally, it's like some windows date time thing that it, this can't figure out. It doesn't agree with. So you get no results back kind of no matter what you do. Uh, and then, uh, well, so that takes care of the older version stuff. This takes care of the newer version stuff. Or, uh, sorry, that's, this is the newer version stuff. This takes care of the older version stuff where instead of using that new column, I have to go into the XML and I have to uh, figure out um, the, the timestamp stuff from there. Uh, I'd like to thank the lovely and talented Joe Obish for um, contributing this piece of code that does speed things up a bit when processing the XML. Uh, so we can skip past that. It's a bit repetitive. Uh, there is some debug in here. So like, you know, if you wanted to see what ends up in the temp tables to see, you know, figure out what's going on, like maybe some, you think something's missing or weird or whatever, and you want to see what the raw XML looks like, you can do that with the debug command. Uh, this gets you all the weight data. Uh, and again, this is where I filter out all the ignorable weights in here. I was actually rather pleasantly pleased with myself with this little bit of X query, um, I've, I've, I'd never tried to do something like that before, and I was astounded that I could get it to work. Uh, let's see, move on a little bit. Uh, so queries with, with significant weights, la di da we got all that. Uh, weights by count, again, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, grab the XML, ignore weights we don't care about, again, 
pleasantly pleased with myself on that. Uh, and then let's see. So this is where the rounding happens. So that weight interval, weight round interval minutes kicks in here. So it's, you know, this event time divided by weight round interval minutes times weight round interval minutes will get me the date times rounded to whatever precision you care about. Uh, this repeats again for the weights by duration. Then we get the, well, the summary of weights by duration, blah, 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 blah. This is all the IO stuff that I have to get. Again, this, this, X, this X query was a little tricky at first. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't enjoy writing it. It was really late when I was writing it too. And I was really like tinkering with stuff to try and get it to work right. And it turned out that um, I just had to do things the hard way all along. I tried a bunch of things the easy way and none, none of it panned out. Uh, so that's all the p potential I/O issue stuff. Uh, CPU details again. There's you know pretty pretty good chunk, pretty good chunk of information in this set of uh, XML. Uh, let's move down to the memory details. And so this is why I had I have not put memory details in the slides yet because this returns a whole bunch of rows or a whole bunch of columns. And I just haven't seen anything interesting enough in these columns yet to screen, screenshot them in a meaningful way where I could show you uh, something interesting going on in there. And for the same reason, I don't have any like findings analysis type stuff written for this yet because boy howdy, it's, um, it's a lot of stuff to look at and a lot of stuff that some of it, some of it I have a feeling I'm, like you would have to trend over time which like leads into having to like persist this stuff to like real tables and then like run analysis on that. And I'm just not, I'm just not there with this yet. Let's be honest with you. I don't know if I'll ever get there with this. It might just be, might just be is what it is. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't get upset. Uh, beyond that, um, this is, you know, this section was in the slide because there is some interesting stuff in there. Uh, not all of it's interesting. I mean, again, the spin log stuff, if I ever see something in there, I will wear my pants on my head in the next video. Maybe I'll wear someone else's pants on my head. Who knows? Uh, the useless stuff, again, this is stuff that I spent way too much time on for what the value that I actually got out of it, especially having to do this. Uh, for some reason, the task address column, remember the thing that I was just like, useless? Well, it turns out I had to do a lot of work to get that to even be valid binary eight to match it up to things that don't exist anymore by the time this runs. So spent a bunch of time on that. Turned out uh, there was no gold in them dar hills. Uh, da -da -da. And then finally, the block process stuff. And again, this is incredibly nerfed compared to what you get if you actually set up an extended event session with the blocked process report in it. Um, if you ever are interested enough to do so, um, look at the columns that come out of here and compare them with the columns that I can get out of the block process report uh, with SP underscore human events block viewer. Go away, SQL prompt. You're always trying to make yourself present and known. Uh, but there's a much shorter list of columns in here. And even for a lot of these, these are only, like even for a lot of them, they are only um, sometimes populated with data, which is real disappointing. But, uh, you know, actually for a lot of these, that what I've found is that the blocking process is blank for a lot of them, which is just extra weird. Um, I've, I've seen that with the regular block process report XML too, but it happens way more frequently with this stuff. So anyway, uh, this runs and just like in SP human events block viewer, after the blocking query stuff uh, gets in there, I do my best to find, come on, scroll faster, you heathen. What's wrong with you? Uh, I do my best to go out to the plan cache and find any execution plans in there related to the blocking that was going on. Uh, this section is still uh, under construction in the three places where I've implemented it. That's here, SP Human Events Block Viewer and SP Blitz Lock. Just because uh, SQL Handle is uh, a less precise identifier than I would like in a lot of cases. And there's some cross contamination between, you know, um, code and like store procedures and triggers and other things like that. And it's just, 
even like cross database stuff, like if you have like two databases on the same server and they have the same queries running against them, a lot of those queries end up with the same SQL handle. So sometimes it'll be like blocking is happening in this database. Oh boy, it's bad. But then like you go and look at the query plan and the query plan context is for another database where that SQL handle existed. So I'm still trying to figure that out. Like I thought it would be as easy as correlating to um, SQL handle and database name uh, down here. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, what ended up happening is if queries executed in a different context, like let's say you had a worker database and all the queries start there but go out to other databases, uh, the database wouldn't match up there and I was losing execution plans. So I couldn't just match on database ID here because that would mess me up down the line. So still trying to figure that out a little bit, but I, I really like having this section there just because even with some of the impreciseness, it is a lot easier to deal with, to have those plans in there than to have to go open the XML, get the SQL handle, run it for, you know, something else. And also, you know, it's nice to have some of the execution resource usage details in here when you run it rather than having to go, you know, perform extra steps to get all this stuff. So anyway, just a quick run through of SP uh, Health Parser. Um, it's available over on GitHub in beta version. So if you want to go test it out, try it out, uh, leave me feedback, give me any corrections, give me anything, uh, anything else you'd like to see in here, maybe some ideas for uh, like findings and roll up stuff or any other analysis I could do on this. More than welcome to accept it because um, right now it's just, it's in its infant stages and I am happy to get any user direction or feedback that helps me make a better store procedure for you, for free. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna call that here so I can um, go do something else that I wanna do instead. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, don't be afraid to throw a little thumbs up my way. If you uh, like the video extra good and you wanna subscribe to my channel to see more videos, sort of like this one, well, you can go ahead and hit that little, little ringy bell icon and uh, as always, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, I hope you learned something, and I hope you will continue watching my totally free, voluntary, no one is holding my family hostage and making me do this, uh, SQL Server content, and uh, I will see you in some other video, some other time, voluntarily, for free. I am not under duress right now. No one is telling me to say that. Anyway, goodbye.